Welcome to 110%, a Surfing Techniques DVD with coaching tips that have been proven to work by experienced surf coaches. There are three main sections, beginner and intermediate tips, advanced surf moves techniques, and basic surf information. There is also a bonus section on stand-up paddle surfing. To help you learn from this DVD, it's best to pick out a section that you would like to work on and go through the move a few times, taking notes in your own words to help remind you. It's best to just take one or two key points into a surf session at a time. Before you surf, it helps to make notes on your hands or on your board so that you can look at them in between waves. Here are a few of the main coaching terms used throughout the DVD. For safety, go surfing with a buddy so that you can keep an eye on each other in the water. And if you are an absolute beginner, then we recommend you have at least one surf lesson with an approved surf school. Try to head for a lifeguard patrolled beach when you are starting out. They use a flag system of red and yellow flags for swimmers and black and white checkered flags for surfers and other watercraft. And look out for the red flag indicating that surfing conditions are too dangerous to enter the water. Look out for rocks and rip currents and know what the tide is doing. Lifeguard signs on the beach entrances will help you identify the dangers. The biggest danger is getting hit by a board. Here are a few examples of wipeouts. So protect your head with your hands and keep your board beach side of you when you wipe out. Rips can often be found next to rocks as shown here. To spot a rip, look for a choppy surface, indicating moving water. The rip will generally be adjacent to the breaking waves. A rip is a body of water moving out to sea. They are created by the waves displacing water, which then finds its own level, by moving out to sea. Once the water has levelled out, the rip disappears. The bigger the surf, the bigger the rip currents. If you do get caught in a rip, and find yourself floating out to sea, it's important to remain calm, stay on top of your surfboard and paddle parallel to the shore in the direction of the breaking waves. Once you get out to the surf, the waves will then push you towards the beach. Don't fight the rip head on by trying to paddle against it. And if the rip is too strong to paddle parallel, then drift out to sea with the rip until you're in the lineup and then head back in with the waves. If you feel that you need help, then raise one arm straight up in the air, and this is the distress signal, and shout help. Get specific advice for your board from a surf coach, surf shop, or a more experienced surfer. A common mistake is starting out on an unsuitable board. If your board is too small, you'll struggle to catch a wave and won't be in control. Make sure that you get a tide book and a surf and weather forecast. For example, go to magicseaweed.com before you head out. You'll need to know what the tide is doing for safety and find out what difference the tide makes at your local beach. The size of the waves and local winds should also influence your beach choice. As a beginner, ideally you're looking to go to a beach where the surf will be small. 
Bigger waves make it much more difficult to learn. Avoid rip currents and the biggest break on the beach. The more experienced surfers are usually surfing very close to a rip and use this channel to paddle back out after catching waves. You'll need plenty of experience, good paddling technique and strength before you can do this. As a beginner, don't follow the more experienced surfers into the rip and then end up having trouble getting out of it. Also on the way down to the beach, look out for rocks and also what else might affect you later on when the tide changes. One important rule to follow in the surf is don't drop in. Rachel is closest to the peak where the wave first breaks and therefore has priority. And Luke shows bad etiquette by dropping in on her. Here are some other examples of drop-ins. When paddling for a wave, look over your shoulder to the peak and see if anybody else has caught it. If someone else is in position, then pull back your rails so that you don't drop down the wave. If you drop in by accident, ensure that you kick out as soon as possible. Another move that shows bad etiquette is snaking. This is when a surfer paddles around someone to get closer to the peak and gain priority, as shown here. Luke paddles round Rachel. Now that he has priority, Rachel pulls back. If 
you have priority when paddling for the wave, ensure that you are going to make the wave, otherwise the wave will be wasted, as shown here. Toby looks as if he is going to catch the wave, but then decides not to go, not leaving Alex enough time to catch the wave. This time, Toby shows good etiquette and sees that Alex is in a better position, so lets him take the wave. When paddling back out to the lineup, try to be considerate to other surfers' rides and try to keep control of your board as much as possible. As a surfer, you spend most of your time paddling, so that it's important to start out with the correct technique to increase board speed, which will help you catch waves earlier, thus giving you more time to pop up. First of all, ensure you're lying on the board in the correct position. The classic mistake is to lie too far back on the board so that the tail drags under the water and slows you down. Too far up the board and you're going to nosedive. So try shifting your body up and down the board to ensure your tail is not too far under the water and the nose is just poking out of the surface. A common mistake is the hand entering the water too far away from the board thus reducing the depth and power of the stroke. Ensure your stroke is close to your board rails. Your shoulders need to be arched back. This can be difficult at first because you need strong back and shoulder muscles. Lift your legs up and shift your trunk forward to increase board speed. Make sure you dig long deep strokes. A common error is to do short shallow slaps on the water. When paddling for a wave, make sure that you are square with the wave, otherwise you could bog a rail like this. To change the direction of your board, briefly change your paddle stroke to alter your course. To turn the direction of your board to the right, use your right hand and pull the water towards your rail. With your left hand, push away from the rail. You can also lean your trunk right too. As you're doing this, keep your shoulder back to stop your rail bogging. The most important phase of paddling for a wave are the final few strokes. As you feel the wave lift the tail of your board, push your trunk weight forward. To help you do this, lift your hips off the board and dig deep. Once you stop paddling, put your hands on the rails next to your chest. This is important for popping up to your feet and also if the wave is slack you can hold this press up position to keep you with the wave until it's time to pop up. Once you have mastered the basic white water rides, you're now ready to paddle out further and catch unbroken waves. Safety should be your first consideration prior to doing this. Before you start using rip currents to get out the back, you need to practice paddling and build up your strength so that you're confident on your board. To get out through the waves, first of all walk out as far as possible pushing the tail of the board and thrusting the board over the white water. Make sure you throw your weight forward, otherwise you'll get bashed backwards. Once you've pushed the last wave of the set, it's time to paddle out. Push off the sand with your feet and as you lay onto your board, this will give you some speed straight away. Position your hands close to your chest on the rails around the middle of the board. A common mistake here is to put your hands too far forward and nosedive. As you're paddling out and you see a wave coming towards you, paddle at the wave and as you hit it, go into the press-up position and move all of your body weight over your shoulders. If you don't put your weight forward, you will get knocked back. The bigger the wave, the more you need to throw your weight forward as the white water hits you. Another technique is to sit on your board with your bottom near the tail so that the nose lifts into the air with your hands on the rail to help control. As the white water hits your board, throw your body forward over the wave using the strength in your arms and your shoulders. Then start paddling straight away. To get through bigger waves, the duck dive is the best option. It's a lot easier on shorter boards, 
but it is possible on a longboard, as shown here. Approach the oncoming whitewater with speed. Try to duck dive just before the whitewater hits you. Have all of your body weight over your shoulders. As you do this, push your back knee and then push the toes of your back foot. Your arms should be straight as you push your board down. Once you're underwater, bend your arms so your chest is close to the deck. As you rise out of the water, move your body back into the normal prone position. For more advanced surfers who need to duck dive heavier waves, timing is also very important. You either have to duck dive through the face of the wave, or delay your paddle so that the wave has already broken and some of its energy has dissipated. But there is only a small window of time before the white water gains another surge of energy towards the beach. The Eskimo roll is a preferred method for longboarders to get through bigger waves. Paddle at the wave with the speed, grab both rails, rest your elbows on the rail to stop the board from hitting you in the face, move your whole body slightly up the board, this will help you sink the nose, and lean your trunk weight so the board flips. Pull on your strongest hand to help the roll. Once upside down, pull the board towards your body, ensuring the nose is under the water. Otherwise, the wave will rip the board away from you. Hold on tight as you get rumbled, and then push your board skyward with an extra push on your strongest hand to help rotate your trunk. Start paddling straight away so that the back of the wave doesn't pull you towards the beach. Once you are out the back, you'll need to keep an eye on approaching sets. Practice turning by moving your bottom towards the tail and use your hands and feet to help you turn. Keep some trunk weight forward over the deck otherwise you'll fall back every time. A great way to get your board speed up quickly is with the cork effect. Pull your board towards you and down under the water, then as it pops back up, lay down and start paddling. Once you've mastered the cork effect, you can even catch waves without paddling. This also helps when you want to turn around quickly to catch a wave. The correct stance is the back foot straight across the board, front foot at an angle, knees slightly bent and feet down the centre of the board with your arms out to help you balance. Then also try relaxing your shoulders. If you find that you're having trouble balancing, here are a few common mistakes in how to fix them. Make sure you're not balancing on just your toes. Keep your feet flat to help with balance. Always look where you are going. If you look down at your feet, you will lose your balance. Make sure your belly is facing to the side and not towards the nose. Twist your neck to look in the direction that you're travelling. Popping straight to your feet requires a lot of upper body strength, agility and good technique. You can practice the technique at home on the floor. Your hands have to be close to your chest, on your rails, supporting all of your body weight. And a common error is placing your hands too far away from your chest. Thrust forward using your back foot toes, as if you were in the starting blocks. You're aiming to get your front foot in between your hands where your chest was. And your back foot also travels up the board, but not too far, otherwise your feet will be too close together and you'll lose your balance. You need to rotate your hips as you pop up. This will help your rotation so your stance is correct once you're up and riding. Without this hip movement, you'll end up in the ski stance, which is a really difficult way to balance. If you find it difficult to rotate your hip as you pop up, there is a slightly different technique, which some people prefer, that involves a different hand position. Put your trailing hand in line with your chest as normal, but put your leading hand in front of your chest. This gives you more room to swing your front foot into position. If you can master the pop-up on the floor, but not in the water, then work on your timing with the wave. Try popping up higher up the wave face, 
rather than in the trough like this. Pop to your feet quickly, but stand up slowly with your bottom tucked in. A common mistake, which is shown here, is standing up too quick and losing your balance. If your hands are in line with your chest and your timing is good, but you still find it difficult to get your front foot far enough up the board, then quickly move your front foot up the deck to keep your board speed and stay with the wave. If you are using your knees to stand up, still keep your weight over your shoulders for board speed and leave your hands on the rails as these are your stabilisers. Then plant your front foot in between your hands and then your back foot. Another knee technique is to bring your front knee onto the deck and stand up with your back foot and then your front foot. It is important to keep practicing the pop-up. Once you start to drop down the wave, to control the board, apply some pressure to your back foot and bend your trailing knee. Spread your arms to help keep you balanced and look where you're heading, but still keep some pressure on your front foot to stop you from falling backwards like this. Once you have successfully dropped down the wave, you'll gain lots of board speed and enter an area called the flats, and then the white water will catch up with you. At this stage, you'll stop unless you trim your board. To do this, shuffle your feet forward, back foot, then front foot. Once you're going faster, shuffle back, front foot, then back foot, otherwise you'll nosedive. For board control, or to slow down, practice moving your hips back to shift your body weight to the back leg. Drop your back knee with lots of pressure on the back foot and also some pressure on the front foot for balance. Shift your hips forward and put weight on your front leg for speed. Practice this so you can ride the wave as far as possible. Once you have enough speed to do a forehand turn, drop your back knee, apply pressure to your back foot, especially your toes, and weight your back leg. Remember to look in the direction that you want to go. Drop your trailing hand to help you rotate your hips. Don't hold the turn for too long, otherwise you'll lose the wave and fall off. To turn backhand, apply pressure and weight to your back heel. Rotate your hips as you do this. Use your leading shoulder to help direct you and look where you want to go. You are looking to spot a lump of green water. Watch it grow whilst paddling and pop up to your feet just before the wave breaks and drop down the wave. A frequent error is the lip landing on you as you paddle. This is due to not looking out to sea far enough to spot the swell lines early, therefore not giving you enough time to get ready. You need to try catching the wave a lot earlier than you think. To do this, spend some time just sat in the lineup looking out for a set of swell lines. Then watch the lines pass you and then break. Then look even further out to sea and see if you can spot them even earlier. Keep extending your eye distance to see how early you can spot the lines. The surface shown here has spotted the wave far enough out to give him plenty of time to turn around and paddle for the wave. As he starts to paddle, he is also watching the wave to get the correct timing. There is more than one wave in a set, so if you see lots of other surfers paddling for the first wave, then assume that there will be another wave behind it and try to reposition for the next wave. Try to avoid getting dragged off the sandbank by a cross-shore current or wind. Keep looking at the beach reference point to help you stay in position. Start with catching as many waves as possible as you want to have a high wave count in order to get lots of practice with catching unbroken waves. Try not to paddle for the biggest waves, instead try paddling for the tiny green waves. The best waves are generally the ones which have a long gap between them. The waves to avoid are ones which have a smaller wave just in front of them. This results in either a short ride or not catching the wave. 
Another mistake is not looking at the wave enough when paddling and instead concentrating too much on yourself. Remember, each wave is going to be a little bit different, so just keep watching the wave to help position yourself. Don't take your eyes off the wave and save your strongest paddles for when the lump is really close to you. Make sure you don't make the mistake of popping up too early, just like this. Instead, when the wave is underneath and you feel the board lift, dig at least a couple more paddles and push your trunk down the wave. Only pop up when you feel weightless, just as the board starts to travel down the wave. If you get the timing wrong and try popping up in the trough of the wave, the downward force from having just dropped down the wave puts a lot of strain on your upper body, making the pop-up more difficult. Harry on the right has popped up at the correct time and the other surfer has popped up too late. This section is aimed to help you take off on a small wave and ride along its face. It is very important that you maintain eye contact with the wave as you paddle out and spot where it's peaking up the highest. You need to position yourself close to this peak and to be able to get enough paddles in before the wave breaks. If you cannot get into position, then move so you can catch the next wave of the set using the first wave as a guide. When you feel the board rise as the wave picks you up, dig deep to make sure you've caught the wave, then put your hands on the rails close to your chest, with all of your weight forward over your shoulders and arms. Lean on your inside rail and look down the line along the green face of the wave, looking where you want to go. Hold this position as the inside rail buries into the wave, and then it will start to travel along the green face. Pop up to your feet Bend your back knee and drop your trailing hand so that it touches the water. Once you've popped up, keep your body compressed and apply extra pressure to your back foot to help the rail stay in the water. A common error is not doing the extra paddles when the board lifts, resulting in the wave passing by without you. To stay with the wave and maintain speed on the green face, you'll need to stall and trim your board. To stall, weight your back leg and apply pressure to your back foot, but also keep some pressure on your front foot for balance. The nose will then unweight and travel up the face. Then shuffle your feet forward to trim, back foot then front foot, then shuffle back to stall. When on your backhand, it's a little bit trickier to balance, but the same applies, except you'll be using your back foot heel to stall. You can also try cross-stepping. This is trickier, but it is a favourite with longboarders. After you've stalled your board with your back foot and the nose is moving up the face, cross your back foot over your front foot and then step your front foot further up the deck. Try to do this light-footed by staying on your toes. Then cross-step backwards before you nosedive. When trimming, put slightly more pressure on your toes to keep the inside rail in the wave and prevent you from slipping down the wave. The speed turn is great for travelling faster down the line to avoid the lip hitting you and also good for setting up speed for a move. The speed turn applies to all types of boards, including a short board, as shown here. To do a speed turn, you need to apply pressure to the toes of your back foot, weight your back leg and extend your trunk upwards and then as you reach the top of the wave, compress your trunk and ease off the toe pressure. Breathe in to help extend your trunk and breathe out to compress your trunk. The same applies for your backhand, except you need to pressure your back foot heel at the bottom of the wave. The bottom turn is the most important wave riding move because it sets up your next turn. To utilise the wave's power, bottom turn in the trough of the wave. To bottom turn, 
bend your knees as you compress your body. Look to the top of the wave and try to touch the water with your trailing hand to help you rotate your hips and shoulders. Weight your back leg and press your back foot toes. After the bottom turn, to help you travel up the wave, extend your trunk. Breathing in helps you achieve this. If you find that you're falling off flat onto the green face, this is because you're leaning your upper body instead of weighting your back leg to pivot the board. When bottom turning on your backhand, it's a little trickier to balance, but easier to weight your back leg. Pull your leading shoulder back to help you direct up the face and press on the heels of your back foot. Once you start riding the green face, you will need to start cutting back, otherwise you'll surf too far onto the shoulder and the wave will go on without you. First you will need to set up your cutback with a bottom turn. This will take you to the top of the wave. As you're approaching the top, compress closer to your board by bending your knees. Weight your back leg and press on your back foot. As you're doing this, still keep your trunk over your front thigh to keep you with the wave and to stop you falling backwards. Rotate your shoulder, trunk and hips towards the white water. Look where you're going and use your leading arm to guide you. Don't put too much pressure on your front foot, otherwise you'll bog your rail. Maintain your weighted back leg and extend your body as you come out of the turn. To turn back so you're heading along the green wave again, you need to compress your body, weight your back leg and press on your back foot. Rotate your hips and look to the top of the wave. Touch the wave with your trailing hand to help with the pivot. To help you compress your body through the turn, try touching the outside rail with your trailing hand. A common error is not using your hips and trunk enough when turning. Here are the key points again with a smaller wave on a long board. Compress, trunk forward, weight back leg, pressure back foot, rotate hips and trunk and look where you're heading. As you are approaching the top of the wave, compress your body, rotate your hips and trunk and use your trailing hand to help pivot by touching the water and lower your leading hand to help keep your trunk weight forward, therefore increasing your speed through the turn. Extend your body out of the turn and maintain a weighted back leg. Press on your back foot toes to make your board move higher up the wave, which will make recovery easier and you will get lots of speed for your next turn. The correct stance is the back foot straight across the board, front foot at an angle, knees slightly bent and feet down the centre of the board with your arms out to help you balance. Then also try relaxing your shoulders. If you find that you're having trouble balancing, here are a few common mistakes in how to fix them. Make sure you're not balancing on just your toes. Keep your feet flat to help with balance. Always look where you are going. If you look down at your feet, you'll lose your balance. Make sure your belly is facing to the side and not towards the nose. Twist your neck to look in the direction that you're travelling. Popping straight to your feet requires a lot of upper body strength, agility and good technique. You can practice the technique at home on the floor. Your hands have to be close to your chest, on your rails, supporting all of your body weight. And a common error is placing your hands too far away from your chest. Thrust forward using your back foot toes, as if you were in the starting blocks. You're aiming to get your front foot in between your hands where your chest was. And your back foot also travels up the board, but not too far, otherwise your feet will be too close together and you'll lose your balance. You need to rotate your hips as you pop up. This will help your rotation so your stance is correct once you're up and riding. Without this hip movement, you'll end up in the ski stance, which is a really difficult way to balance. 
find it difficult to rotate your hip as you pop up, there is a slightly different technique, which some people prefer, that involves a different hand position. Put your trailing hand in line with your chest as normal, but put your leading hand in front of your chest. This gives you more room to swing your front foot into position. If you can master the pop-up on the floor, but not in the water, then work on your timing with the wave. Try popping up higher up the wave face, rather than in the trough, like this. Pop to your feet quickly, but stand up slowly with your bottom tucked in. A common mistake, which is shown here, is standing up too quick and losing your balance. If your hands are in line with your chest and your timing is good, but you still find it difficult to get your front foot far enough up the board, then quickly move your front foot up the deck to keep your board speed and stay with the wave. If you are using your knees to stand up, still keep your weight over your shoulders for board speed and leave your hands on the rails as these are your stabilizers. Then plant your front foot in between your hands and then your back foot. Another knee technique is to bring your front knee onto the deck and stand up with your back foot and then your front foot. It is important to keep practicing the pop-up. Once you start to drop down the wave, to control the board apply some pressure to your back foot and bend your trailing knee. Spread your arms to help keep you balanced and look where you're heading, but still keep some pressure on your front foot to stop you from falling backwards, like this. Once you have successfully dropped down the wave, you'll gain lots of board speed and enter an area called the flats, and then the white water will catch up with you. At this stage, you'll stop unless you trim your board. To do this, shuffle your feet forward, back foot, then front foot. Once you're going faster, shuffle back, front foot, then back foot, otherwise you'll nosedive. For board control, or to slow down, practice moving your hips back to shift your body weight to the back leg. Drop your back knee with lots of pressure on the back foot and also some pressure on the front foot for balance. Shift your hips forward and put weight on your front leg for speed. Practice this so you can ride the wave as far as possible. Once you have enough speed to do a forehand turn, drop your back knee, apply pressure to your back foot, especially your toes, and weight your back leg. Remember to look in the direction that you want to go. Drop your trailing hand to help you rotate your hips. Don't hold the turn for too long, otherwise you'll lose the wave and fall off. To turn backhand, apply pressure and weight to your back heel. Rotate your hips as you do this. Use your leading shoulder to help direct you and look where you want to go. You are looking to spot a lump of green water. Watch it grow whilst paddling and pop up to your feet just before the wave breaks and drop down the wave. A frequent error is the lip landing on you as you paddle. This is due to not looking out to sea far enough to spot the swell lines early, therefore not giving you enough time to get ready. You need to try catching the wave a lot earlier than you think. To do this, spend some time just sat in the lineup looking out for a set of swell lines. Then watch the lines pass you and then break. Then look even further out to sea and see if you can spot them even earlier. Keep extending your eye distance to see how early you can spot the lines. The surface shown here has spotted the wave far enough out to give him plenty of time to turn around and paddle for the wave. As he starts to paddle, he is also watching the wave to get the correct timing. There is more than one wave in a set, so if you see lots of other surfers paddling for the first wave, then assume that there will be another wave behind it and try to reposition for the next wave. Try to avoid getting dragged off the sandbank by a cross-shore current or wind. Keep looking at the beach reference point to help you stay in position. 
should start with catching as many waves as possible, as you want to have a high wave count in order to get lots of practice with catching unbroken waves. Try not to paddle for the biggest waves, instead try paddling for the tiny green waves. The best waves are generally the ones which have a long gap between them. The waves to avoid are ones which have a smaller wave just in front of them. This results in either a short ride or not catching the wave. Another mistake is not looking at the wave enough when paddling and instead concentrating too much on yourself. Remember each wave is going to be a little bit different so just keep watching the wave to help position yourself. Don't take your eyes off the wave and save your strongest paddles for when the lump is really close to you. Make sure you don't make the mistake of popping up too early, just like this. Instead when the wave is underneath and you feel the board lift, dig at least a couple more paddles and push your trunk down the wave. Only pop up when you feel weightless just as the board starts to travel down the wave. If you get the timing wrong and try popping up in the trough of the wave, the downward force from having just dropped down the wave puts a lot of strain on your upper body, making the pop-up more difficult. Harry on the right has popped up at the correct time and the other surfer has popped up too late. This section is aimed to help you take off on a small wave and ride along its face. It is very important that you maintain eye contact with the wave as you paddle out and spot where it's peaking up the highest. You need to position yourself close to this peak and to be able to get enough paddles in before the wave breaks. If you cannot get into position, then move so you can catch the next wave of the set using the first wave as a guide. When you feel the board rise as the wave picks you up, dig deep to make sure you've caught the wave, then put your hands on the rails close to your chest, with all of your weight forward over your shoulders and arms. Lean on your inside rail and look down the line along the green face of the wave, looking where you want to go. Hold this position as the inside rail buries into the wave, and then it will start to travel along the green face. Pop up to your feet Bend your back knee and drop your trailing hand so that it touches the water. Once you've popped up, keep your body compressed and apply extra pressure to your back foot to help the rail stay in the water. A common error is not doing the extra paddles when the board lifts, resulting in the wave passing by without you. To stay with the wave and maintain speed on the green face, you'll need to stall and trim your board. To stall, weight your back leg and apply pressure to your back foot, but also keep some pressure on your front foot for balance. The nose will then unweight and travel up the face. Then shuffle your feet forward to trim, back foot then front foot, then shuffle back to stall. When on your backhand, it's a little bit trickier to balance, but the same applies, except you'll be using your back foot heel to stall. You can also try cross-stepping. This is trickier, but it is a favourite with longboarders. After you've stalled your board with your back foot and the nose is moving up the face, cross your back foot over your front foot and then step your front foot further up the deck. Try to do this light-footed by staying on your toes. Then cross-step backwards before you nosedive. When trimming, put slightly more pressure on your toes to keep the inside rail in the wave and prevent you from slipping down the wave. The speed turn is great for travelling faster down the line to avoid the lip hitting you and also good for setting up speed for a move. The speed turn applies to all types of boards, including a short board, as shown here. To do a speed turn, you need to apply pressure to the toes of your back foot, weight your back leg and extend your trunk upwards and then as you reach the top of the wave, compress your trunk and ease off the toe pressure. 
breathe in to help extend your trunk and breathe out to compress your trunk. The same applies for your back hand except you need to pressure your back foot heel at the bottom of the wave. The bottom turn is the most important wave riding move because it sets up your next turn. To utilise the wave's power, bottom turn in the trough of the wave. To bottom turn, bend your knees as you compress your body. Look to the top of the wave and try to touch the water with your trailing hand to help you rotate your hips and shoulders. Weight your back leg and press your back foot toes. After the bottom turn, to help you travel up the wave, extend your trunk. Breathing in helps you achieve this. If you find that you're falling off flat onto the green face, this is because you're leaning your upper body instead of weighting your back leg to pivot the board. When bottom turning on your back hand, it's a little trickier to balance, but easier to weight your back leg Pull your leading shoulder back to help you direct up the face and press on the heels of your back foot. Once you start riding the green face, you will need to start cutting back, otherwise you'll surf too far onto the shoulder and the wave will go on without you. First you will need to set up your cutback with a bottom turn. This will take you to the top of the wave. As you're approaching the top, compress closer to your board by bending your knees. Weight your back leg and press on your back foot. As you're doing this, still keep your trunk over your front thigh to keep you with the wave and to stop you falling backwards. Rotate your shoulder, trunk and hips towards the white water. Look where you're going and use your leading arm to guide you. Don't put too much pressure on your front foot, otherwise you'll bog your rail. Maintain your weighted back leg and extend your body as you come out of the turn. To turn back so you're heading along the green wave again, you need to compress your body, weight your back leg and press on your back foot. Rotate your hips and look to the top of the wave. Touch the wave with your trailing hand to help with the pivot. To help you compress your body through the turn, try touching the outside rail with your trailing hand. A common error is not using your hips and trunk enough when turning. Here are the key points again with a smaller wave on a long board. Compress, trunk forward, weight back leg, pressure back foot, rotate hips and trunk and look where you're heading. As you are approaching the top of the wave, compress your body, rotate your hips and trunk and use your trailing hand to help pivot by touching the water and lower your leading hand to help keep your trunk weight forward, therefore increasing your speed through the turn. Extend your body out of the turn and maintain a weighted back leg. Press on your back foot toes to make your board move higher up the wave which will make recovery easier and you will get lots of speed for your next turn. Firstly, we're going to go through the move stage by stage and then you can pick out one or two key points that you think that you might need to work on. Keep all of your body weight over your shoulders. This will keep you on the wave and give you speed on the drop, otherwise you could miss the wave altogether. As you're taking off or completing a previous turn, anticipate the next turn as soon as possible by making eye contact with the next section. Set up your turn by getting lots of speed dropping down the face of the wave. Lower your back knee and shift your hips forward. 
so your trunk weight is over your leading thigh. Be careful not to nosedive though. Press your back foot for control. Bottom turn timing is tricky because it's difficult to view the top of the wave. Try to commit to the bottom turn deeper so you don't end up too far onto the flat shoulder of the wave. Commit to the bottom turn earlier so that you are anticipating the section. As you get close to the trough, compress low so your bottom is close to the water and have eye contact with the steepest part of the wave. Don't look too far down the line to the shoulder and miss the best section. Bend your leading arm behind your back and rotate your hips as you put pressure on the heel of your back foot. You need to pivot just on a small part of your rail or tail. A mistake here is to drive too much of the inside rail into the wave for too long, which sends you to the shoulder. Only drive if you need to get round a section, then start to pivot to enable your board to direct up the face. Continue to pull your leading arm behind you. Coming out of the bottom turn, continue to weight your back leg and apply pressure to your back foot to help the board pivot. At the same time, you need to extend the trunk of your body and leading thigh upwards to lift you up the face. Breathe in to help you extend your trunk. Just before you get to the top of the wave, about three quarters up the face, rotate your leading arm all the way around so your hand is now pointing down the wave. Make sure your shoulders, trunk and especially your hips rotate. If you start the turn too early, you'll do a lame mid-face turn or too late and your board will fly off the back of the wave. Another mistake is to do lots of arm movement but the body isn't actually following. Compress your body as close to the board as possible. This will result in a fast explosive turn. For added spray effect through the turn, push your back foot upwards as you shift all of your trunk weight over your leading thigh. To help you do this, place your leading hand flat over the deck of your board just above your front foot. This will help you to start to travel back down the wave. If you find that you get hung up on the lip, this is because you haven't got enough body compression and or enough weight over your front thigh. In order to get control of the board and avoid nose diving, apply pressure to your back foot and start to make eye contact with the next section to anticipate your next move. Don't try to remember all of the points, instead watch the turn again and pick out one or two key points that you personally need to work on, then take them into your surf session. For example, if you find that you get hung up at the top of the wave, then work on body compression and putting your leading hand onto the board to help weight the middle or front of the board. Firstly, we're going to go through the move stage by stage and then you can pick out one or two key points that you think that you might need to work on. Make sure you keep all of your body weight over your shoulders as you take off, especially if it's a steep drop. If there is air under your board, you'll get hung up in the lip which will make the drop difficult and the wave will run off without you. Make eye contact with the next section to help you decide which move is going to be most suited. A semi-steep section is ideal for a power turn. If you're coming out of a previous turn, then firstly you'll need to lift yourself as far up the wave face as possible in order to utilise the wave speed. To do this, extend your body upwards, apply light pressure to toes on your back foot, slight hip rotation and breathe in to help the body extension. Set up your bottom turn by getting lots of speed dropping down the face of the wave. To do this, compress your body lower and lower as you drop down the wave, drop your back knee forward and shift your trunk weight over your leading thigh, putting pressure on your back foot for control. A common mistake here 
is concentrating too much on making the drop by standing too tall and having all of your weight leaning back, which results in slower board speed, therefore making the turn more difficult to complete. Maintain eye contact with the section to help you anticipate the correct bottom turn timing. If you think that you're going to end up too far onto the shoulder, then you can sneak in a fade turn as you drop down the wave. This is done by the transition of pressure between your toes and heel on the back foot. Also slightly rotate your hips to help the turn. If you think that the section has turned out steeper than you originally thought, then try to be spontaneous and change the thought process to an off the lip, otherwise you could end up hesitating and missing the best section. Maintain eye contact with the next section and bottom turn in the trough of the wave. If you bottom turn too early on a steep wave, you could fall flat on your face. Compress your body low to the board with lots of pressure on the toes of your tail foot. Use your trailing hand to help rotate your hips by trying to touch the trough of the wave. Coming out of the bottom turn, continue to weight your back leg and apply pressure to your back foot to help the board pivot. At the same time, you need to extend the trunk of your body and leading thigh upwards to lift you up the face. Breathe in to help you extend your trunk. Start to compress your body and as your tail gets three quarters up the face, change rails by applying pressure to the heel of your back foot and change your body rotation. Pull your leading arm behind you until you touch the water. A mistake here is starting the rotation too early, which results in a weak mid-face turn. As you reach the top, stay compressed. Grab the outside rail to help with the compression. Drop your back knee, shift your hips forward, so that all of your body weight is directed down to the trough and push your back leg down the wave. Only use the heel of your front foot to guide the inside rail. Too much force will bog the rail. An error here is to rotate back towards the white water too early and make the turn look tweaky. So make sure you drive down the wave first. All of your inside rail should be in the water. Another mistake is putting too much weight on the front heel and bogging the rail. Powerful surfers can sometimes compensate bogging the rail by increasing the back foot pressure to power through the turn. Adjust more weight onto your back heel through the latter stages of the turn as you start to rotate back towards the white water. Keep your leading hand in the water to help you pivot. At the end of the turn, another mistake is getting stuck in the trough of the wave which makes recovery difficult. To prevent this from happening, continue with your rotation for longer. As you feel the fins are about to slide out, make sure your hips are forward so that all of your body weight is over your front thigh and apply pressure to your back foot. Stay low and compress your body and try to drop your back knee so that it touches the surfboard. The wave will then lift you to the top of the white water. Grab the lip with your trailing arm to help you rotate your hips in the opposite direction. Shift your hips back so that all of your body weight moves onto your back foot so that your fins lock in. Once your fins are locked in, quickly get your hips forward to gain momentum to get you dropping back down the wave. Don't try to remember all of the points, instead watch the turn again and pick out one or two key points that you personally need to work on then take them into your next surf session. For example, if you keep bogging the rail and falling off, then try compressing your body closer to the board. Grabbing the outside rail will help. And put more pressure on your back foot rather than on your front foot. This fins out off the lip is a high performance turn. We are going to go through parts of this move that are different to the previous forehand power turn section.
Then you can pick out one or two key points that you think that you need to work on. This time, you'll need a lip to hit, so look for a steep section. The bottom turn is the most important stage of this turn. A mistake here is hesitating and not committing to a steep section. Standing too tall results in slower speed out of the bottom turn. To prevent this mistake, commit to the bottom turn in the trough of the wave and compress as low as possible to create speed out of the turn. Apply lots of pressure to the toes of your back foot and help rotate your hips by touching the trough of the wave. This body rotation and compression will help you pivot on the tail so you travel more vertically and faster up the face. As you're coming out of the bottom turn, to prevent your board from moving onto the shoulder and missing the lip section, you need to add an extra stage to the move to get the board hitting the lip vertically. As you extend your trunk upwards, you need to apply extra pressure to your back foot and extra weight to your back leg so that just the tail and fins are in the water. This will help pivot the board more vertically. It's tricky because your back leg is doing the opposite action to the rest of your body. This is a key difference between doing an OK off the lip and a top class vertical move. Rotation of the leading arm, trunk and hips is started later than a normal off the top. Delay until you get really close to the top of the wave. It's important to stay committed at this stage. If you rotate too early, your fins won't release at the top of the wave. A mistake is for the board to fly away from you. To prevent this, quickly shift your shoulder and trunk weight over the centre of your board. At the same time, compress your body close to the board with all of your body weight over your front thigh. You should be balancing on your front foot. This keeps your board on the wave. Your front foot and thigh will be taking most of your body weight. If you haven't enough trunk weight over your front thigh and or not compressed enough, you could get hung up in the lip. As you compress your body through the turn, you also have to extend your trailing leg and apply some pressure to your back foot so that you don't lose contact with the tail. Try to keep your trailing knee close to the board. This will push your tail above the lip. If you don't extend your back leg or pressure your back foot or don't compress low enough, you'll lose control of your board and your tail won't release out of the back of the wave. To lock your fins back with the wave, adjust some of your weight to your back foot to gain control of the board, but still maintain plenty of weight over your front foot until you start to drop back down the wave. Make eye contact with the trough of the wave to help guide you down. Just go through the phase of the move that you think you personally need to work out and take one or two key points into your next surf. For example, if you find that you end up missing the steep section that is required for a fins out off the lip manoeuvre, then remember to work on compressing lower on your bottom turn, using all of the wave face by turning in the trough and staying committed. The forehand roundhouse cutback is a great move to improve on from your basic cutback and is easier to work on as you don't need a really steep wave. We are going to go through the parts of this move that are different to a basic cutback and then you can pick out one or two key points that you think that you need to work on. Check out the section to get an idea of what move to do. This slow moving section is ideal as it gives enough time and green face to perform a full roundhouse cutback. The bottom turn doesn't have to be as extreme as the previous turn, therefore less body rotation, less pressure on back foot toes, less compression and look further down the line. You're drawing out your bottom turn onto the shoulder rather than towards the lip. If your bottom turn is too sharp, you won't have enough room to perform the move at the highest level. Coming out of the bottom turn, 
start to extend your trunk upwards, lift your leading thigh towards your body and slightly weight your back leg and apply light pressure to your back foot toes. Maintain eye contact with the top of the wave. Delay your body rotation until you reach the top of the wave. A common mistake is to rotate too early and not utilise the wave face. As you reach the top of the wave, start to compress your body low to your board and rotate your leading arm so that it touches the water. This will help you pivot your hips and your trunk. Drop your back knee and push your trunk weight forward and press your back foot hard downward to the trough of the wave. Use your front foot to help guide all of your inside rail in the water and hold this position until you reach the trough. Don't turn too sharp back on yourself. All of your inside rail should be in the wave. It's important to keep your trunk weight forward driving down towards the trough. If your trunk weight is too far back your inside rail will release too early and you won't be able to use all of the wave for the next stage of the move. Therefore, it makes it more difficult to hit the lip. Make eye contact with the lip and stay committed. Compress your body low to your board and continue with your body rotation and touching the water with your leading hand. Put lots of weight on your back leg and pressure the heel of your back foot to pivot on your tail and fins. Rotate your trailing shoulder to help open up your body as you come out of the bottom turn. Unweight the middle front of your board by extending your body upwards whilst maintaining body rotation and weighted back leg and lots of pressure on your back foot heel. Just before you get to the top of the wave, you need to completely change the direction of rotation. Rotate your hips, trunk, shoulder and arms. Point your leading arm down the wave. Body compression is key to a quick turn. An error here is not staying committed by rotating too early, resulting in not hitting the lip. This phase is backhand off the lip, so in order to stay with the wave, you need to transfer all of your trunk weight over the front of your board. Try putting your leading hand on the deck of the board next to your front foot to help transfer of weight. Stay central over your board. Once you feel you're dropping back down the wave, adjust some extra weight to your back foot to stop a nosedive. Don't try to remember all of the points. Instead, watch the turn again and pick out one or two key points that you personally need to work on, then take them into your surf session. For example, if you find that your roundhouse is stuttering and not flowing, then try increasing your speed on the carve by lowering your back knee and shift more trunk weight down the wave towards the trough through the turn. And commit and compress closer to your board. Firstly, we're going to go through the move stage by stage and then you can pick out one or two key points that you think that you might need to work on. Keep all of your body weight over your shoulders. This will keep you on the wave and give you speed on the drop, otherwise you could miss the wave altogether. As you're taking off or completing a previous turn, anticipate the next turn as soon as possible by making eye contact with the next section. Set up your turn by getting lots of speed dropping down the face of the wave. Lower your back knee and shift your hips forward so your trunk weight is over your leading thigh. Be careful not to nosedive though. Pressure your back foot for control. Bottom turn timing is tricky because it's difficult to view the top of the wave. Try to commit to the bottom turn deeper so you don't end up too far onto the flat shoulder of the wave. Commit to the bottom turn earlier so that you are anticipating the section. 
As you get close to the trough, compress low so your bottom is close to the water and have eye contact with the steepest part of the wave. Don't look too far down the line to the shoulder and miss the best section. Bend your leading arm behind your back and rotate your hips as you put pressure on the heel of your back foot. You need to pivot just on a small part of your rail or tail. A mistake here is to drive too much of the inside rail into the wave for too long, which sends you to the shoulder. Only drive if you need to get round a section, then start to pivot to enable your board to direct up the face. Continue to pull your leading arm behind you. Coming out of the bottom turn, continue to weight your back leg and apply pressure to your back foot to help the board pivot. At the same time, you need to extend the trunk of your body and leading thigh upwards to lift you up the face. Breathe in to help you extend your trunk. Just before you get to the top of the wave, about three quarters up the face, rotate your leading arm all the way around, so your hand is now pointing down the wave. Make sure your shoulders, trunk and especially your hips rotate. If you start the turn too early, you'll do a lame mid-face turn or too late and your board will fly off the back of the wave. Another mistake is to do lots of arm movement but the body isn't actually following. Compress your body as close to the board as possible. This will result in a fast explosive turn. For added spray effect through the turn, push your back foot upwards as you shift all of your trunk weight over your leading thigh. To help you do this, place your leading hand flat over the deck of your board just above your front foot. This will help you to start to travel back down the wave. If you find that you get hung up on the lip, this is because you haven't got enough body compression and or enough weight over your front thigh. In order to get control of the board and avoid nose diving, apply pressure to your back foot and start to make eye contact with the next section to anticipate your next move. Don't try to remember all of the points, instead watch the turn again and pick out one or two key points that you personally need to work on. Then take them into your surf session. For example, if you find that you get hung up at the top of the wave, then work on body compression and putting your leading hand onto the board to help weight the middle or front of the board. Firstly, we're going to go through the move stage by stage and then you can pick out one or two key points that you think that you might need to work on. Make sure you keep all of your body weight over your shoulders as you take off, especially if it's a steep drop. If there is air under your board, you'll get hung up in the lip which will make the drop difficult and the wave will run off without you. Make eye contact with the next section to help you decide which move is going to be most suited. A semi-steep section is ideal for a power turn. If you're coming out of the previous turn, then firstly you'll need to lift yourself as far up the wave face as possible in order to utilise the wave's speed. To do this, extend your body upwards, apply light pressure to toes on your back foot, slight hip rotation and breathe in to help the body extension. Set up your bottom turn by getting lots of speed dropping down the face of the wave. To do this, compress your body lower and lower as you drop down the wave, drop your back knee forward and shift your trunk weight over your leading thigh, putting pressure on your back foot for control. A common mistake here is concentrating too much on making the drop by standing too tall and having all of your weight leaning back, which results in slower board speed, therefore making the turn more difficult to complete. Maintain eye contact with the section to help you anticipate the correct bottom turn timing. If you think that you're going to end up too far onto the shoulder, then you can sneak in a fade turn as you drop down the wave. This is done by the transition of pressure 
between your toes and heel on the back foot. Also slightly rotate your hips to help the turn. If you think that the section has turned out steeper than you originally thought, then try to be spontaneous and change the thought process to an off the lip, otherwise you could end up hesitating and missing the best section. Maintain eye contact with the next section and bottom turn in the trough of the wave. If you bottom turn too early on a steep wave, you could fall flat on your face. Compress your body low to the board with lots of pressure on the toes of your tail foot. Use your trailing hand to help rotate your hips by trying to touch the trough of the wave. Coming out of the bottom turn, continue to weight your back leg and apply pressure to your back foot to help the board pivot. At the same time, you need to extend the trunk of your body and leading thigh upwards to lift you up the face. Breathe in to help you extend your trunk. Start to compress your body and as your tail gets three quarters up the face, change rails by applying pressure to the heel of your back foot and change your body rotation. Pull your leading arm behind you until you touch the water. A mistake here is starting the rotation too early, which results in a weak mid-face turn. As you reach the top, stay compressed. Grab the outside rail to help with the compression. Drop your back knee, shift your hips forward so that all of your body weight is directed down to the trough and push your back leg down the wave. Only use the heel of your front foot to guide the inside rail. Too much force will bog the rail. An error here is to rotate back towards the white water too early and make the turn look tweaky. So make sure you drive down the wave first. All of your inside rail should be in the water. Another mistake is putting too much weight on the front heel and bogging the rail. Powerful surfers can sometimes compensate bogging the rail by increasing the back foot pressure to power through the turn. Adjust more weight onto your back heel through the latter stages of the turn as you start to rotate back towards the white water. Keep your leading hand in the water to help you pivot. At the end of the turn, another mistake is getting stuck in the trough of the wave which makes recovery difficult. To prevent this from happening, continue with your rotation for longer. As you feel the fins are about to slide out, make sure your hips are forward so that all of your body weight is over your front thigh and apply pressure to your back foot. Stay low and compress your body and try to drop your back knee so that it touches the surfboard. The wave will then lift you to the top of the white water. Grab the lip with your trailing arm to help you rotate your hips in the opposite direction. Shift your hips back so that all of your body weight moves onto your back foot so that your fins lock in. Once your fins are locked in, quickly get your hips forward to gain momentum to get you dropping back down the wave. Don't try to remember all of the points, instead watch the turn again and pick out one or two key points that you personally need to work on then take them into your next surf session. For example, if you keep bogging the rail and falling off, then try compressing your body closer to the board. Grabbing the outside rail will help. And put more pressure on your back foot rather than on your front foot. This fins out off the lip is a high performance turn. We are going to go through parts of this move that are different to the previous forehand power turn section. Then you can pick out one or two key points that you think that you need to work on. This time you'll need a lip to hit so look for a steep section. The bottom turn is the most important stage of this turn. The mistake here is hesitating and not committing to a steep section. Standing too tall results in slower speed out of the bottom turn. To prevent this mistake, 
commit to the bottom turn in the trough of the wave and compress as low as possible to create speed out of the turn. Apply lots of pressure to the toes of your back foot and help rotate your hips by touching the trough of the wave. This body rotation and compression will help you pivot on the tail so you travel more vertically and faster up the face. As you're coming out of the bottom turn, to prevent your board from moving onto the shoulder and missing the lip section, you need to add an extra stage to the move to get the board hitting the lip vertically. As you extend your trunk upwards, you need to apply extra pressure to your back foot and extra weight to your back leg so that just the tail and fins are in the water. This will help pivot the board more vertically. It's tricky because your back leg is doing the opposite action to the rest of your body. This is a key difference between doing an OK off the lip and a top class vertical move. Rotation of the leading arm, trunk and hips is started later than a normal off the top. Delay until you get really close to the top of the wave. It's important to stay committed at this stage. If you rotate too early, your fins won't release at the top of the wave. A mistake is for the board to fly away from you. To prevent this, quickly shift your shoulder and trunk weight over the centre of your board. At the same time, compress your body close to the board with all of your body weight over your front thigh. You should be balancing on your front foot. This keeps your board on the wave. Your front foot and thigh will be taking most of your body weight. If you haven't enough trunk weight over your front thigh and or not compressed enough, you could get hung up in the lip. As you compress your body through the turn, you also have to extend your trailing leg and apply some pressure to your back foot so that you don't lose contact with the tail. Try to keep your trailing knee close to the board. This will push your tail above the lip. If you don't extend your back leg, or pressure your back foot, or don't compress low enough, you'll lose control of your board, and your tail won't release out of the back of the wave. To lock your fins back with the wave, adjust some of your weight to your back foot to gain control of the board, but still maintain plenty of weight over your front foot until you start to drop back down the wave. Make eye contact with the trough of the wave to help guide you down. Just go through the phase of the move that you think you personally need to work out and take one or two key points into your next surf. For example, if you find that you end up missing the steep section that is required for a fins out off the lip manoeuvre, then remember to work on compressing lower on your bottom turn, using all of the wave face by turning in the trough and staying committed. The forehand roundhouse cutback is a great move to improve on from your basic cutback and is easier to work on as you don't need a really steep wave. We are going to go through the parts of this move that are different to a basic cutback and then you can pick out one or two key points that you think that you need to work on. Check out the section to get an idea of what move to do. This slow moving section is ideal as it gives enough time and green face to perform a full roundhouse cutback. The bottom turn doesn't have to be as extreme as the previous turn, therefore less body rotation, less pressure on back foot toes, less compression and look further down the line. You're drawing out your bottom turn onto the shoulder rather than towards the lip. If your bottom turn is too sharp, you won't have enough room to perform the move at the highest level. Coming out of the bottom turn, start to extend your trunk upwards Lift your leading thigh towards your body and slightly weight your back leg and apply light pressure to your back foot toes. Maintain eye contact with the top of the wave. Delay your body rotation until you reach the top of the wave. A common mistake is to rotate too early and not utilise the wave face. As you reach the top of the wave, start to compress your body low to your board 
and rotate your leading arm so that it touches the water. This will help you pivot your hips and your trunk. Drop your back knee and push your trunk weight forward and press your back foot hard downward to the trough of the wave. Use your front foot to help guide all of your inside rail in the water and hold this position until you reach the trough. Don't turn too sharp back on yourself. All of your inside rail should be in the wave. It's important to keep your trunk weight forward, driving down towards the trough. If your trunk weight is too far back, your inside rail will release too early and you won't be able to use all of the wave for the next stage of the move. Therefore, it makes it more difficult to hit the lip. Make eye contact with the lip and stay committed. Compress your body low to your board and continue with your body rotation and touching the water with your leading hand. Put lots of weight on your back leg and pressure the heel of your back foot to pivot on your tail and fins. Rotate your trailing shoulder to help open up your body as you come out of the bottom turn. Unweight the middle front of your board by extending your body upwards whilst maintaining body rotation and weighted back leg and lots of pressure on your back foot heel. Just before you get to the top of the wave, you need to completely change the direction of rotation. Rotate your hips, trunk, shoulder and arms. Point your leading arm down the wave. Body compression is key to a quick turn. An error here is not staying committed by rotating too early, resulting in not hitting the lip. This phase is backhand off the lip, so in order to stay with the wave, you need to transfer all of your trunk weight over the front of your board. Try putting your leading hand on the deck of the board next to your front foot to help transfer of weight. Stay central over your board. Once you feel you're dropping back down the wave, adjust some extra weight to your back foot to stop a nosedive. Don't try to remember all of the points. Instead, watch the turn again and pick out one or two key points that you personally need to work on, then take them into your surf session. For example, if you find that your roundhouse is stuttering and not flowing, then try increasing your speed on the carve by lowering your back knee and shift more trunk weight down the wave towards the trough through the turn and commit and compress closer to your board. Stand-up paddle surfing, or beach boy style, is a traditional Hawaiian style of surfing. It's super fun, great exercise, and extremely challenging as you learn. The board used in this clip is 12 foot long and super thick and wide using an 80 inch long paddle. When starting out, you need a day with minimal swell and light winds. It's really easy to drift, so make sure that you get yourself a marker on the beach. If you drift out to sea due to an offshore wind, then just use the normal prone paddle technique to return closer to the shore. Pick an area of the beach where there are no waves so that you can practice balancing on the board and paddling straight. Get some board speed up by paddling on your knees, then grab your paddle as you move your feet into position. Your belly should be facing towards the nose, with your feet flat close to the rail at a slight angle. Have your leading foot slightly further forward. You have to balance from side to side horizontally across the board. Bend your knees slightly to help you balance, and don't keep looking at your feet, instead look directly in front of you to help your balance. Hold your hand over the top of the T-bar with the other hand in a wide grip. A common mistake is to have the hands too close together which reduces paddle power. Follow the rail of the board as you paddle. Push with the top hand and pull with the other. Most people prefer to have their strongest hand in the middle of the bar but it's down to personal preference. To increase power and therefore speed Shuffle forward and bend your knees. Make sure the nose is not sticking out too far, otherwise the tail will drag under the water and you'll lose your speed and balance. 
Once you've got the hang of getting up to your feet, try a beach start by getting some board speed up by pushing off the sand and popping straight into position. Slight turns can be done by pushing on your inside foot in the direction you want to head and paddle the opposite side. Enter the paddle next to the rail and pull the paddle away from the rail to turn and then straighten up the stroke along the rail for speed. To turn the other direction, you'll need to change grips as you cross over the paddle to the opposite rail. If you think you're going to lose your balance, try to use your legs to counteract this or place the paddle into the water further out from the rail to help regain your balance. But don't look at the paddle, keep looking ahead. To do a faster turn, move your feet back towards the tail, adopting a more surf style stance and weight your back leg. Keep paddling to maintain speed. Then shuffle your feet forward again. This turn is good for when you've just completed a ride. Sometimes you'll need to turn around quickly and do a 180 degree turn. To do this, try the back paddle. Enter the paddle in the water behind you and pull the water towards your rail. Twist your wrist as you do this. Practice on your backhand too, spinning the other direction. The back paddle is also useful if you find that you are veering off in the wrong direction and need to straighten up. For example, when you're lining up to catch waves or when paddling out through waves, just do a small back paddle to change direction and then continue with your paddle strokes. This way, you don't have to change grip and you stay on your strongest side. Once you've mastered paddling and turning, it's time to paddle out to a quiet part of the beach to get some small waves. When paddling out, it's important that you approach the oncoming waves straight on. If you're at a slight angle, then quickly turn to straighten up, even if it means sacrificing some speed. As the wave hits the board, make sure your body is extended with slightly bent knees so that it can absorb the impact and lean back as you travel up the wave, otherwise you'll fall on your face. Once you're at the top of the wave, move your trunk weight forward to stop you from falling backwards. In extreme cases on bigger waves, you may need to step forward at this stage. Then start paddling to get the board speed back. If you lose your balance, then use the paddle to regain composure. In the lineup, position yourself further out than you would normally sit. With the advantage of being stood up, you'll be able to spot the sets earlier and catch the waves earlier. Turn your board so that you're facing the beach with either of the turning techniques. Look behind you at the wave as you paddle. This makes it tricky to balance, but essential for timing with the wave. As the wave lifts you up, compress your body and lean your trunk forward as you paddle. A common mistake here is not to have enough trunk weight forward and you end up falling backwards. Only adjust to the normal surfing stance once you've caught the wave. A common error is to change stance too early and end up losing speed. Stand up paddle surfing enables you to catch really small waves. You can also catch waves by paddling in an arc. This is good for watching the wave which will help with timing and you will gain board speed at the same time. Start to use this technique once you are confident with your turning.
On bottom turns, use the paddle to lean into the turn and this is also great for helping rotate the board on cutbacks. Try to finish your ride with a bottom turn so that you can paddle straight back out again. To do this, you'll need to move your feet back to the tail to be able to pivot your board. Then quickly shuffle your feet forward to help with board speed when you're paddling back out.